anesthesia readers. I bet you are a philosopher yourself if you found your way to my YouTube page somehow. Whether you know the proper terminology or not, if you question the meaning of life, society, and everything in between, and often get told that it isn't that deep, you are among friends and in a safe space with me. Yo, hey, fuck got this book, nigga. All the rage, nigga. We got rage, nigga. We in the streets. In times of chaos and uncertainty and blatant rising fascism, it can be challenging to make sense of the world around us. We may feel overwhelmed by the constant barrage of news and information, unsure of what to believe or how to respond. Philosophy, however, can provide us with a framework for understanding the underlying causes of socio-political issues and can offer guidance on how to respond to them. It can also also help us become more discerning about the information we receive and develop critical thinking skills that are essential in times of propaganda and misinformation. In the age of information, as they say, ignorance is a choice and one that the powers that be are betting on you to take. Ignorance is not bliss in these circumstances, but perhaps most importantly, philosophy helps us reflect on our own values and beliefs and how they relate to the wider world. As anti-fascists and people striving for an equitable future can help provide us with a sense of purpose and direction and guide us in making decisions that align with our values. As a black person and a student of Bell Hooks and Franz Fanon, my philosophical approach along with everything else is always viewed through a radical black lens. I believe that even common philosophy movements have unique nuances when blackness is involved and applied. In the counterculture, art movements and philosophies are used to respond to dominant voices and to document the unheard or deliberately silenced voices. Their stories and the concerns of the people, aka the proletariat. As the world grows increasingly tumultuous, this is reflected in our choices in fashion, music, media, and art as a whole. I recently came across a graduate student on TikTok who mentioned that when people have the urge to dance more via disco, techno, and raves, it reflects a need for escapism in the larger culture. They found parallels in their research between the increase in dance music across decades and the rise in war and political turmoil. Disco, for instance, was a reaction to the Vietnam War. German techno was born during the Cold War in a hostile Berlin. When we are hopeless, we turn to music, art, and artists. This discovery made me curious about the significance of artistic political movements like Afro-surrealism, Afro-pessimism, and Afro-futurism in today's political landscape. What do these movements currently reflect in our culture that we need to hear? And what can we learn from these similarities and differences? These are the types of questions that keep me up at night when I'm stoned and just chilling with my cat. So I started making content so I wouldn't just be the person with a tinfoil hat contemplating all these ideas alone. So please, join me as we dive into the world of philosophy and discover how it can help us navigate the challenges of our time. Together, we can explore the deeper questions of life, society, and politics, challenge our own assumptions, and forge a path forward using artistic movements and philosophies that push our world views. Let's begin. Art movements can originate from various sources, including social, political, cultural, and economic context. In general, art movements arise in response to the dominant artistic styles and conventions of the time, often seeking to challenge or subvert these established norms. Some art movements have been born out of social justice, such as the civil rights movement in the United States. The Black Arts Movement, for example, emerged in the 1960s and 70s as a response to systemic racism, Jim Crow apartheid, and social injustice. The movement sought to promote and celebrate Black culture and identity through various art forms including literature, music, and visual arts. We can thank this movement for iconic slogans such as I am a man, used at the March on Washington, Black is Beautiful, promoted through Black femme leaders in the community and the Black Panther Party, and Say It Loud by James Brown, to name a few. We also can't forget our dear Nina Simone. Some art movements have their origins in intellectual or cultural changes, such as the Romantic movement in Europe in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Romanticism was characterized by a focus on emotion, individualism, and nature, and it emerged as a direct counteractive response to the rationalism and the industrialization of the Enlightenment era. It chose to romanticize every aspect of life, including war, famine, and the dark side of humanity. Examples of modern intellectual and cultural movements include Black Lives Matter, Me Too, and the rise of intersectional feminism. These ideas have gained widespread attention and support, influencing social and political discourse, and shaping the public
public consciousness on issues related to race, gender, sexuality, and social justice, much to the right's dismay. Shifts in culture cause many opposing views to backlash as they view the evolution of culture as a war. They aren't too far off base though, because when intellectual and cultural movements take real shape, they have also led to changes in policy, law, and cultural norms, highlighting the power of these movements to affect real world change. You have been called uh, a revolutionary, a militant. Uh, uh, much of the media has pictured you this way. It's talked about all over the world. What, uh, what, what, what do you see as the meaning of the term revolutionary? Well, there's no single simple meaning of the term revolutionary. A revolutionary is a man or a woman who is a lot of things. But basically, the revolutionary wants to change the nature of society in a way to promote a world where the needs and interests of the people are responded to. Some art movements have arisen in response to specific historical events or cultural shifts. For example, Dadaism emerged in Europe in the early 20th century in response to the devastation of World War I. Dada artists rejected traditional artistic norms and embraced the absurd and nonsensical as a way of ex expressing their disillusionment with society and culture. In my opinion, a great modern example of this is Core Core. Core Core, to me, is a modern social media Dada. Ism. It's popular on places like YouTube, TikTok, and Tumblr for editing and clip farming to express the exhaustion of capitalism, sexism, and other overarching themes of oppression. I believe Core Core was born as a cultural shift in disillusionment to capitalism, commercials, the internet's algorithm, in the face of the polite society. Some art movements have been sparked by individual artists who push the boundaries of traditional art forms and styles. For example, the Impressionist movement in France in the late 19th century was led by artists such as Claude Monet, who experimented with new techniques and styles to capture the fleeting impressions of light and color in nature. One example of the modern art movement that has been sparked by individual artists pushing the boundaries of traditional art forms and styles is street art. Street art has its roots in graffiti, which emerged in the late 1960s and early 1970s as a form of expression among black and brown city youth in New York City. However, in recent years, street art has evolved into a more mainstream art form, with individual artists using public spaces as their canvas to create large-scale murals and installations. These movements often challenge and subvert established artistic norms and seek to explore new forms of expression and meaning. Before we can talk about the details of what blackness can be in these art movements, let's establish which ones we'll be focusing on. Surrealism is an art movement that emerged in the 1920s, characterized by dreamlike, illogical, and often disturbing imagery. Surrealist artists sought to tap into the unconscious mind and explore the irrational and bizarre. Surrealism is about exploring the shadow self in often contradictory, conflicting, and absurdist ways. Some notable examples of surrealist art include Salvador Dali's paintings, such as The Persistence of Memory, The Seventh Seal by Ingmar Bergman, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari by Robert Wien, Alice in Wonderland, and Everything by David Lynch. Now, most people who know about art, even on the most basic level, have heard of Dolly's work. I think it's important to mention that he was a nihilist absurdist who thought that because life was cruel and meaningless in his mind, that he could get a pass for his own toxic behaviors. Dali was a fascist sympathizer and a bigot and used art to be a provocateur of those triggering and hot button issues. To me, I think cheaply triggering people for the sake of art is a weak and simple-minded approach to art. Let's call it the death in June effect. We will discuss how in modern reality, black artists utilize surrealism to confront, not support fascism and bigotry. Unfortunately, if you didn't already know, Every artist you love is an asshole, so please keep your distance. No more Futurism is an artistic and social movement that originated in Italy in the early 20th century. Futurist artists sought to capture the energy and excitement of the modern world celebrating technology, speed, and industrialization. Futurism, to me, looks at the problems of the world and sees hope and solutions through technological advancement and community. Futurism is an overwhelmingly optimistic and slick aesthetic. However, some artists have used futurism to wrestle with the ups and downs and complexities of techno-reliance. 
science. Examples of futurist art includes Metropolis by Fritz Lang, Blade Runner by Ridley Scott, The Matrix, and 1984 by George Orwell. Pessimism is a philosophy or a worldview that emphasizes the negative aspects of life and the human condition. Pessimistic thinkers believe that the world is inherently flawed and that human suffering is inevitable. Pessimism is of the Buddhist and Stoic ethos of acceptance and suffering with less positive insight. Using futurism as a contrast, pessimism looks at the problems of the world and sees limited opportunities to change them. Unlike nihilism, however, pessimism does not relish in this fact, but laments in it. Examples of pessimistic art and literature include The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy, The Stranger by Albert Camus, A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, and The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Sillinger. Completely separate and random thought, I just realized. A good representation of all three philosophies, pessimism towards the social culture, surrealist storytelling, and exploring the pros and cons of futurism, is with Netflix's Black Mirror. I just heard they'll be back for season six tune, to which I asked, what else do we have to fear at this point? <laughs> I shudder at the thought, <laughs> but I'll be watching. So what's black about these movements? Or rather, what can be black about these movements? Afro-surrealism is a cultural movement that emerged in the 20th century influenced by surrealism, but with a focus on the experiences of Black people. Afro-surrealist art often explores themes of identity, race, and spirituality using surreal and dreamlike imagery. Examples of Afro-surrealist art include the works of John michel Basquiat and Juan Jechi Mutu. Afrofuturism is a cultural movement that imagines a future where Black people are at the forefront of technology and innovation. Afrofuturist art often blends traditional African motifs and aesthetics with futuristic imagery, exploring themes of identity, race, and social justice. Afrofuturism puts its focus on imagining a future in which Black people and communities are empowered and thriving, and it's a celebration of Black creativity and innovation. Examples of Afrofuturist art include the works of Sun Ra and Janelle Monae. Afropessimism is a philosophical perspective that challenges the optimism of mainstream social and political movements, emphasizing the ongoing legacy of racism, colonialism, the transatlantic slave trade, and and violence. With its roots in counteracting systemic racism, oppression, and exploitation, Afro-pessimism views the enduring impact of these structures on African people and communities. Afro-pessimistic art often explores themes of trauma, loss, and resistance, drawing on the experiences of Black people across the diaspora. Examples of Afro-pessimistic art include the works of Kara Walker and Franz Fena. So, you've heard of tier lists, let's dive even deeper. Afro-pessimism is a school of thought that views the experiences of African people and communities in a pessimistic light as a result of centuries of systemic oppression and exploitation. This perspective recognizes that the legacy of colonialism and slavery has had a profound impact on the continent of Africa as well as on all African diaspora communities around the world. Post-traumatic slave syndrome is an explanatory theory that really looks at multi-generational trauma. Afro-pessimists argue that the oppressive systems that have historically targeted African people and communities are not simply a matter of individual prejudice or ignorance, but rather deeply entrenched and systemic. They argue that this systemic oppression is a fundamental part of the way the world works and that it is unlikely to be dismantled through individual efforts or even social movements. Afro-pessimism sees the white supremacist capitalist patriarchy as an inevitability. Afro-pessimism has been criticized by some for being overly pessimistic and for failing to recognize the agency and resilience of African people and communities. However, supporters argue that this perspective is an important tool for understanding the enduring impacts of systemic racism and oppression and for developing strategies to resist and transform these structures. People who support Afro-pessimism see it as being realistic, while others see it as being futile. The novel The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon is a great example of Afro-pessimism that people still know and love today. This influential work explores the psychological effects of colonialism and the violence of anti-colonial struggle. Fanon's analysis of the impact of colonialism on the psyche of the colonized is a key aspect of Afro-pessimistic thought. I mean, if you take a man like Franz Fanon, how many of you have heard of Franz Fanon? Boy. You'll hear a lot about Franz Fanon, but you'll never read that Franz Fanon is a Pan-Africanist. <laughs> He's a revolutionary, 
He fought here, he fought there, he did this with the French Communist Party, but no way will they call him a Pan-Africanist. And France Fanon is a sterling example of Pan-Africanism. I love recommendations and offering deeper context to where I'm weaving these thoughts together. So here are some of my favorite examples of Afro-pessimism in media. Beloved by Toni Morrison is a novel that explores the legacy of slavery and its impact on Black American identity and the psyche. The story follows Seed, a former slave who has escaped her freedom but is haunted by the memory of her murdered child. The novel explores themes of trauma, memory, and the struggle for self-definition in the face of historical oppression. Native Son by Richard Wright is a novel novel that depicts the life of Bigger Thomas, a young black man living in poverty in Chicago in the 1930s. The story follows Bigger's experiences with racism and poverty and his eventual descent into crime and violence. The novel explores themes of race, class, and the ways in which systemic oppression can lead to individual acts of violence and resistance. The Color Purple by Alice Walker is a novel that explores the lives of young black women in the rural South in a post-slavery 1900s atmosphere. The story follows Seely, a young woman who has experienced abuse and trauma throughout her life as she struggles to find her voice and assert her own identity, resisting the life bestowed on her because of stereotypes and expectations based on her blackness, gender, and her skin complexion. The novel explores themes of gender, sexuality, and the intersectionality of race and oppression. Side note, in my head, Seely is an undiagnosed autistic woman who is bisexual and has no words or explanations for any of this in the Jim Crow South. Now, in a similar case with Walker, you may have heard that Alice has some controversial boomer-ass takes on queerness, womanhood, and society. It's harder to call in people who have established themselves as thought leaders of their time. Unfortunately, a lot of her work seemed to be viewed through the prism of that time period to be enjoyed without conflict. Just save yourself the grief. <laughs> <laughs> when you are out of order, you're out of order, you're out of order, the whole trial is out of order, they're out of order. 12 Years a Slave, directed by Steve McQueen, is a film based on the true story of Solomon Northup, a free black man who was kidnapped and sold into slavery in the mid-19th century. The film explores the brutal realities of slavery and the impact of this system on individuals and communities. The film also highlights the resilience and resistance of enslaved people in the face of systemic oppression. I personally believe there are better examples of the transatlantic slave trade and themes of resistance, but I will give credit where it is due. Fruitvale Station, directed by Ryan Coogler, is a film that depicts the final day in the life of Oscar Grant, a young black man who was shot and killed by police officers in Oakland, California in 2009. The film explores the impact of police violence and the ways in which systemic racism and prejudice can lead to tragic and unnecessary loss of life. As a full disclaimer, I have not yet finished this movie and probably never will. As an adult, my first protest was at an Oscar Grant counteraction. I will never forget the impact his story had on me as a young black person entering the world directly after high school. And it doesn't stop there with the darkness of black reality. When They See Us, directed by Ava DuVernay, is a television series that tells the true story of the Central Park Five, a group of black and Latino teenagers who were wrongfully convicted of rape in 1989. The series explores themes of race, justice, and the impact of institutional racism on individuals and communities. As a New Yorker, the Central Park Five case has always struck a chord with me, and though they received justice more than 30 years later, it still feels like it will never be enough for their trauma and lost time. Them, created by Little Marvin, is a television show that explores the experiences of a Black family who moves to an all-white neighborhood in the 1950s. The series explores themes of race, trauma, and the impact of historical oppression on individual lives and communities specific to the Great Migration. We often we tell the stories of our grandparents and great-grandparents relocating to the north and west to escape Jim Crow, but we never tell the story about the first families who did so and what they may have endured. While I have previously criticized them for gratuitous violence, I'm re-watching with a friend to expand my original reactions to try and absorb the cultural meaning. In Afro-pessimism, violence and anger are gratuitous, and that's a part of the point. If Bill Street Could Talk by James Baldwin is a novel that tells the story of a young Black couple in New York City in the 1970s. The novel explores themes of love, 
family and the impact on individual lives and black relationships. As a fan of James Baldwin, I personally say he teetered between Afrofuturism and Afro-pessimism. I think his wrestling with these ideas led him to escape to Europe and experience his humanity as a black queer man without so many rules and expectations. The music of Kendrick Lamar can also be viewed as Afro-pessimistic if you are truly paying attention. Lamar's music often addresses themes of racism, police brutality, and the legacy of slavery. His work is known for its introspective and socially conscious lyrics, which reflect a deep understanding of the ongoing effects of oppression. They usually have double or triple meanings and deserve multiple sessions of listening and discussion. On a semi-lighter note for Afro-pessimism, Dear White People, created by Justin Simeon, is a television show that explores issues of race, identity, and belonging on a college campus. The series explores the experiences of Black students and the ways in which they navigate and challenge systemic oppression and prejudice. The series uses irony and even some level of Afro-surrealism to express these ideas and pose challenges and conflicts to the audience. Regardless of your race, this show is made to provoke your instinct. All of these works are related to Afro-pessimism in that they explore the impact of historical and systemic oppression on Black individuals and our community. They depict the ways in which racism, prejudice, and violence can shape individual experiences and perpetuate cycles of trauma and inequality. However, many of these works can highlight the resilience and resistance of Blackness in the face of this oppression, pointing to the possibility of change and transformation. These examples illustrate the way in which Afro-pessimism has been explored in various forms of media, including literature, film, music, and theory. While it can be a challenging and unsettling perspective, Afro-pessimism is an important tool for understanding the ongoing effects of oppression and the ways in which we can work towards a more just and equitable future. Afrofuturism is a cultural and artistic movement that explores the intersection of African diasporic culture with science fiction, fantasy, and technology. It is rooted in the experiences of Black people and communities and imagines a future in which they are empowered and thriving. Afrofuturism is characterized by a sense of optimism and possibility, as well as a celebration of Black creativity and innovation. It encompasses a wide range of art forms, including literature, music, film, and visual art. In literature, Afrofuturism often involves reimagining history and mythology from an African perspective, as well as creating new worlds and narratives that center Black experiences. In music, it can involve incorporating traditional African instruments and rhythms into modern genres, such as hip-hop or electronic music. In film, it can involve exploring themes of identity, power, and resistance through a sci-fi or fantasy lens. Afrofuturism has been embraced by many Black artists and thinkers as a means of reclaiming their cultural heritage and imagining new possibilities for the future. It has also been seen as a powerful tool for challenging dominant narratives that have historically excluded or marginalized Black people and communities. What did the Tribe Called Quest say? Space pencils overflowing, what you think they want us there? All those niggas, niggas not going. going. They're not taking niggas to space. We're stuck here. <laughs> Afrofuturism is a cultural and artistic movement that combines elements of science fiction, fantasy, and Afrocentricity to explore the African diaspora's past, present, and future. It often emphasizes the intersection of technology, spirituality, and history to create a new and imaginative vision of the diaspora as a whole. Here are some examples of Afrofuturism in media. Sun Ra was a jazz musician and band leader who infused his music and performances with Afrofuturistic themes, including space travel, extraterrestrial life, and ancient Egyptian mythology. Sun Ra's legacy still lives on through Black artists like Erica Badu, Missy Elliott, Busta Rhymes, and Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet's music and albums, The Arc Android and Dirty Computer, incorporates Afro-futuristic themes into their music and their overarching persona, with references to androids, genderlessness, space travel, and time travel. Their concept album, The Arc Android, tells the story of an android named Cindy Mayweather, who becomes a messianic figure for oppressed groups. You can't really mention Afrofuturism or sci-fi in general, for that matter, without Octavia Butler. Her mind was completely revolutionary for its time, and it still continues to be timely in expressing the challenges of the world through a black lens. Because of tumultuous things like the overturning of Roe v. Wade, liberals in the media keep recommending and outcrying that our reality is like The Handmaid's Tale, when to me and to many others, it's more like Butler's Parable of the Sower. This 
This novel is set in a dystopian future where climate change and societal collapse have left many communities struggling to survive. The protagonist is a young black woman who develops a new religion based on the idea of human beings being earth seeds with the goal of colonizing other planets and ensuring humanity's survival. There is more parallels to our current state of the world and its challenges through this and even through the past with Kindred. This novel features time travel and explores the intersection of race and history as a modern day black woman is transported back in time to the era of American chattel slavery. In a world where critical race theory and the 1619 Project are demonized, Kindred teaches us the importance of our history and telling our own story. Her work overall often incorporates elements of African spirituality and mythology to create a unique and imaginative vision of the Black diaspora. Now, let's get into the most popular movie for Afrofuturism as of yet, and maybe to your surprise, it's Black Panther by Ryan Coogler. This blockbuster film is set in the fictional African nation of Wakanda, which is technologically advanced and rich in a powerful mineral called vibranium that helps their advanced and culturally rich society. In Black Panther, the legacy of Africa's impact on the world and its wealth through minerals and resources are not discounted or ignored, but celebrated outright. The film explores themes of African identity, cultural heritage, and the potential for technological progress in Africa through incorporating elements of Afrofuturism into its story, including futuristic technology, and cultural themes drawn from African traditions. The art of Wanjechi Mutu can also be viewed in the optimistic, futuristic, and science fiction lens of blackness. Likely an influence for Black Panther visually, Mutu's work combines elements of science fiction and fantasy with traditional African art forms to create a unique and powerful vision of the African diaspora. Her work often explores themes of identity, gender, and the environment through a lens of Afrofuturism. These examples illustrate the diverse ways in which Afrofuturism has been expressed in various forms of media. By drawing on science fiction, fantasy, and Afrocentricity, Afrofuturist artists are able to create a new and imaginative vision of the African diaspora, one that celebrates its rich cultural heritage while also exploring new and exciting possibilities for the future. Overall, these works of art and literature all relate to Afrofuturism by exploring themes of Black identity, social justice, and technological progress in speculative and imaginative ways. They all push the boundaries of traditional art forms and styles to present a vision of the future that is both inspiring and challenging. Afro-surrealism is a cultural and artistic artistic movement that combines elements of surrealism with the experiences of people of African descent. It emerges as a response to the exclusion of Black voices and perspectives from mainstream surrealism and as a means of exploring the complexities of the Black experience. Afro-surrealism often involves a mixture of dreamlike imagery social commentary and cultural symbolism. It seeks to disrupt dominant narratives and challenge the viewer's understanding of reality while also offering a new perspective on the Black experience. In this way, Afro-surrealism can be seen as a form of resistance against systemic oppression and a celebration of Black culture and creativity. Afro-surrealism chooses to showcase the absurdity of racism and being Black through the Black person's perspective and mindset, which is a cultural shift from the usual outsiders looking in or white gates. In literature, Afro-surrealism often involves the use of fantastical and surreal imagery to explore themes of race, identity, and social justice. It can involve the use of collage, abstraction, and surrealism to create new and provocative images that challenge the viewer's perceptions of reality. Afro-surrealism has been embraced by many Black artists and thinkers as a means of reclaiming their cultural heritage and exploring the complexities of the Black experience. It has also been seen as a powerful tool, disrupting dominant and narratives and offering a new perspective on the world. Here are some examples of Afro-surrealism in media. The artwork of John michel Basquiat is one of my favorite depictions of Afro-surrealism. As a Black artist from Brooklyn, I've always felt incredibly connected and close to him and cried when I saw a Nike footprint of his on his painting at Sotheby's. His overall deep care for his process of art, the lack of so-called care for the art itself, has been a provocative and challenging idea that I've wrestled with since seeing the footprint in person almost 10 years ago at this point. Basquiat's 
Bennett's paintings often feature a mix of street art, graffiti, and references to African and African American culture. His work incorporates elements of surrealism and magical realism to create a unique and powerful vision of the Black experience. Basquiat's art was heavily influenced by the surrealism movement, as well as his own personal experiences as a Black working class child of immigrants artist. And this is a complete editor's note. I don't respect anyone who calls Basquiat's work primitive. I feel like that is coming from a deeply white supremacist and racist place and prefer to categorize him as an Afro-surrealist. His paintings often incorporate cryptic messages, abstract forms, and social commentary that challenge traditional artistic conventions and the dominant culture narratives of his time. His work is an embodiment of Afro-surrealism as it engages with the Black experience through a surrealist lens. The film, The Daughters of the Dust, directed by Julie Dash, explores the lives of Gullah women living on a remote island off the coast of South Carolina. The film incorporates elements of African spirituality and mythology, as well as dreamlike sequences that blur the line between reality and fantasy. There are of magical realism, myth, and African spirituality, Dash explores the complex individualities and identities of these women as they grapple with their past and their future. The film is an example of Afro-surrealism as it employs surrealistic elements to reimagine the lives of Black women and the history of the Gullah people. The writing of Ishmael Reed through his novels and poetry often incorporate surreal and fantastical elements, drawing on African and African-American mythology to create a new vision of the Black experience. His work often challenges conventional ideas about race, politics, and culture. Mumbo Jumbo and the freelance pallbearers are critically acclaimed favorites. Sorry to Bother You is a 2018 satirical science fiction film directed by Boots Riley. The film follows a young black telemarketer named Cassius Green who discovers the key to professional success is by using his white voice. As he moves up the corporate ladder, he becomes increasingly disconnected from his black community and eventually discovers a sinister conspiracy behind the success of his company. The film uses surreal elements such as characters with horse heads and a worry-free labor program that turns workers into horse-human hybrids to critique capitalism and racial inequality. These elements align with Afro-surrealism's focus on challenging traditional societal norms through the use of surreal and fantastical elements. I love this film specifically because Boots points out the extremism and absurdity of code switching. It's violent to ask people of any race to confirm to the greater culture and discount and erase their own. It is violence to expect the proletariat to be workhorses and divorce them from any humanity or choices of their own. He shows how violent it is through a ridiculous turn of events because it is a ridiculous turn of events in reality. Boots is a full comrade, by the way. <laughs> the Underground Railroad is a novel by Colson Whitehead. The novel tells the story of a young slave named Cora who escapes from a Georgia plantation via the Underground Railroad, which in the novel is did as an actual underground railway system. Cora's journey takes her through various states, each with its own unique form of racial oppression and violence. The novel explores themes of historical and contemporary racism, the legacy of slavery, and freedom as a concept. The use of a literal underground railway system as a metaphor for escape and liberation, as well as the surrealist elements that challenge traditional historical narratives, align this with the principles of Afro-surrealism and really dissect what it means to be Black and free. Get Out by Jordan Peele is another recent instant classic and a surrealist horror or a masterpiece, in my opinion. I truly wonder if Jordan knew that this movie would change the trajectory of horror and the relationship Black people have with horror. If you're into Black horror, check out my latest video about Blackness and horror here. I don't know where. <laughs> It'll pop up. This film tells the story of a young Black man who visits his white girlfriend's family for the weekend, only to discover a sinister plot to use his body for experimentation. Through its use of surrealistic elements like the sunken place, the film explores the psychological trauma of racism and the silencing of black voices, especially through well-meaning white liberals and its ongoing impact on black identity and culture. Most likely the most popular depiction of Afro-surrealism in the last 10 years, Atlanta is a TV show created by Donald Glover that follows the story of a young black man named Ernest Earn Marks as he navigates the rap scene in Atlanta, Georgia with his cousin, rapper, Paperboy. In Atlanta, the surreal elements are used to create a unique visual language that highlights the characters 
numerous experiences as black people in America. The show challenges the audience's preconceived notions of reality and black and asks them to view the world through a different lens, one that reflects the surreal nature and dark humor of the black experience. The show touches on various themes such as race, poverty, and identity, and it often takes an unsettling tone in its storytelling and cinematography. As a horror fan, I notice that Atlanta is paced like a horror movie or a Hitchcock. Atlanta's surreal elements include dream sequences, unexpected plot twists, and magical realism. My favorite example of this is through the reparation scholarship episode and the depiction of mixed race black people who are white passing. The episode felt more like a Twilight Zone episode, and it definitely helped with it being in black and white, which I absolutely loved. It was not a modern comedy to me. Atlanta is often so surrealistic and black that I'm convinced most people who watch it are missing the complete narrative. We also can't mention how unnerving Atlanta can be as a black person without mentioning Teddy Perkins. <laughs> These examples illustrate the diverse ways in which Afro-surrealism has been expressed in various forms of media. By drawing on surrealism and magical realism, Afro-surrealist artists are able to create a new and imaginative imaginative vision of the black experience, one that challenges conventional ideas about race, politics, and culture. If Afro-pessimism is a negative philosophy and Afro-futurism is the positive, Afro-surrealism lies in the middle as a neutrality. Afro-pessimism, Afro-futurism, and Afro-realism are all philosophical approaches that seek to understand and address the experiences of people of Black or African descent. Though they have that commonality, there are plenty of differences between them. Afro-pessimism is a philosophical, political, and cultural view that emerged in response to the history of colonialism, slavery, and systemic racism that have targeted people of black or African descent specifically. It is a critical perspective that focuses on the deep and pervasive effects of these oppressive systems on the African diaspora. Afro-pessimism is a theory that views the experience of people of black or African descent as inherently tragic. It argues that the struggle of black people are not just a result of individual or systemic racism, but rather a fundamental aspect of the way the world works. Afro-pessimism holds that the oppression of Black people is unending and unchanging and that there is no way to achieve true liberation as things stand. It would have to be a complete upheaval. You did an interview for the Harvard Gazette and the title of the article was Why America Can't Escape Its Racist Roots. And it's actually a question that I have asked myself many times. So I know it's a broad question for to, to open this conversation, but if you were to identify a handful of things why can't America escape its racist roots? Well, there are many reasons. Um, one is the fact that um, so much is taken for granted. One of the taken for granted um, aspect of our lives is whiteness um, and its significance, that um, it carries a great many advantages being white in this country. Um, it uh, carries a lot of assumptions that this is the norm and that um, not being white is in some respects to be an outsider. That's a direct heritage of our past. Afrofuturism, on the other hand, is focused on imagining a future in which Black people and communities are empowered and thriving. It is characterized by a sense of optimism and possibility, as well as a celebration of Black creativity and innovation. And it encompasses a wide range of art forms, including literature, music, film, and visual art. Afrofuturism is a cultural movement that explores the intersection of African culture and technology. It imagines a future where Black people are not only equal participants, but also leaders in shaping the world. Afrofuturism is a way of imagining a better future for black people and promoting social change. We live in a world where we're not only creating our own images, but we're being fed them constantly. This means that they hold more weight than actual concrete def definitions. For example, what a nerd is supposed to look like or who gets to exist in the future. The rise of film, media, and the internet means that we have never before had so much access to resources that allow us to reinforce the images that we stand behind. We can reinforce images of hate and of love in the way that we surf the web, in the TV shows that we choose to watch, and for writers like myself, in what we choose to create for consumption. 
If Afro-pessimism views white supremacist capitalist patriarchy as the Sith Lords, Afrofuturism views itself as the Jedi. Afro-surrealism is a cultural and artistic movement that combines elements of surrealism with the experiences of people of Black or African descent. It seeks to disrupt dominant narratives and challenge the viewer's understanding of reality. In this way, Afro-surrealism can be seen as a form of resistance against systemic oppression and a celebration of Black culture and creativity. In contrast, Afro-surrealism is a literary movement that seeks to represent the experiences of Black people in a realistic way. It focuses on the complexities of Black life and the ways in which Black people navigate systems of oppression. It is a way of understanding the experiences of Black people without either romanticizing or demonizing them. With this knowledge, we can view Afro-surrealism as a movement that seeks to represent and present the experiences of Black life and its complexities with overarching concepts of absurdity and questions. The movement has its unique features and goals. Afro-pessimism focuses on exposing and dismantling systemic oppression, while Afrofuturism is optimistic and focuses on celebrating Black creativity and empowerment. Afro-surrealism combines surrealism with the Black experience to create a new and provocative perspective to age-old questions and narratives. Although they are different, they are all united by focusing on exploring the experiences of people of Black descent. Afro-pessimism tends to view the experiences of Black people through the stages of grief, while Afrofuturism seeks to imagine a better future for Black people through innovation and healing. Afro-surrealism, on the other hand, seeks to question our realities, represent the experiences of Black people in innovative and sometimes distressing ways. So, what can we learn from all this? Philosophy is important today because it allows us to explore fundamental questions about life and the world and to develop critical thinking skills that can help us navigate complex issues and make informed decisions. It also allows us to engage with different perspectives and to challenge our own assumptions, which can be valuable in fostering understanding and empathy. People use philosophy and art movements to be anti-fascist and resist in a number of ways. They may use philosophy to critically examine underlying assumptions and ideologies that support fascist movement and to develop arguments and strategies for countering them. Art movements such as Afrofuturism, Afropessimism, and Afro-surrealism can be used to resist fascism by providing alternative narratives and perspectives that challenge dominant power structures and amplify marginalized voices. Additionally, philosophy and art can inspire people to take change and engage in activism. The world of these artists and philosophers mentioned in this video have inspired many anti-racist and anti-colonial movements. Similarly, these movements and ideologies have been used to mobilize communities to promote social and political change. By encouraging critical thinking and creative expression, philosophy and art movements can be powerful tools for resistance and social transformation. Free thinking and philosophy are important in resisting fascism and propaganda because they allow individuals to question and critically examine the ideas and beliefs that are presented to them. Fascist regimes often and rely on propaganda to control and manipulate the thoughts and actions of their citizens and they promote a narrow dogmatic worldview that does not tolerate dissent or alternative perspectives. Philosophy, on the other hand, encourages open-mindedness, critical thinking, and the exploration of diverse viewpoints. By engaging in philosophical inquiry, individuals can develop the skills and habits of mind necessary to resist propaganda and fascist ideology. They can learn to ask questions, challenge assumptions, and evaluate arguments based on evidence and reason. Many philosophical and artistic movements have been used throughout history to resist fascism and promote freedom and social justice. For example, for example, during the rise of fascism in Europe in the 1930s and 40s, artists and thinkers associated with the Surrealist and Dadaist movement used their work to express their opposition to fascist ideology and to promote free thought and creativity. Free thinking and philosophy are important tools in resisting fascism and propaganda because they promote critical inquiry, open-mindedness, and resistance to dogmatic worldviews. By engaging in philosophical and artistic movement, individuals can develop the skills skills and habits of mind necessary to resist authoritarianism and to promote freedom and social justice. I think what you're trying to ask is uh, why am I so insistent upon giving out to them that blackness, that black power, that black pushing them to identify with uh, 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 black culture. I think that's what you're asking. 
it's, it's, I have no choice over it in the first place. Movements like Afro-surrealism, Afro-pessimism, and Afro-futurism can resist fascism and propaganda by providing alternative narratives and perspectives to those that are dominant in society. These movements center on the experiences and voices of Black people which have historically been marginalized and oppressed. By foregrounding Black perspectives, these movements challenge the dominant narrative that upholds white supremacy and it reinforces the status quo. Afro-surrealism, for example, uses elements of the surreal to create a dreamlike, or fantastical world that allows us for alternative narratives to be told. It can create a space where Black voices can be amplified and their experiences and perspectives can be explored in a new light. Similarly, Afrofuturism imagines a future that centers on Black people, challenging the dominant narrative that positions white people as a center of progress and innovation. By envisioning a different kind of future, Afrofuturism can help to inspire and motivate people to work towards creating that reality. Afropessimism, on the other hand, is of a more critical movement that challenges the idea that progress is possible within the current system. It acknowledges the ways in which Black people have been systemically oppressed and marginalized throughout history and argues that true liberation cannot be achieved within the confines of the current system. And as an anarchist, I tend to agree with that. By recognizing the limitations of our current system, Afro-pessimism can inspire people to think outside of the box and explore alternative ways of organizing society prioritize the needs and experiences of all. Over all these movements can resist fascism or propaganda by providing alternative ways of thinking, challenging the dominant narrative, and inspiring people to critically think about the world around them. So it's never just thinking and it's always that deep. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is my first long video, so if you made it this far, I appreciate you a bunch. I'm trying to make sure I make at least four videos a month to start out, and so far I've been on track. Thanks for the followers and the views. It's really exciting because not even three weeks ago I had zero followers and zero views and I was sitting on making YouTube for 10 years. So every person, comment, and interaction counts. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you. I hope you stick around to hear me rant about subculture, art, and activism in the future. Peace! Understand what Black is. It is a source from which all things come. A security blanket for the stars. Understand what black is. It is not a color. It is the basis of all colors. It is not a complexion. It is a reflection of all complexions called human. Understand what black is.